Good morning. So we will have a neurology OSCE today. And before you start this tutorial, I would advise you, you may consider taking a pen and a piece of paper. And as we go through this OSCE, I want you to pause the video and write down your answers. And at the very end of the tutorial, I'll go back to slide one and walk you through the different slides and provide some feedback about the questions that have been posed in this OSCE. So let's get started here. So this is a 36 year old woman who presents with a 10 year history of seizures that occur two to three times per week. During the episodes, she is noted to space out with oro elementary and hand automatisms. With some of these episodes, she repeatedly keeps saying, oh my God, oh my God. Her right hand is sometimes seen picking at her clothes and her left arm is seen to be dystonic. Episodes last 30 to 40 seconds, followed by one to two minutes before she is back to normal. She has never had a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. If you want to spend more time on this history, please feel free to pause the video and take your notes. And once you've done that, then let's move on to the next slide. So these are the questions for the OSCE. And I invite you to write your answers, take a piece of paper and a pen. What is the seizure classification based on the history that was provided to you? Based on some of the findings, some of the description of the history, what is the probable seizure lateralization and localization? And the final question for this slide is, describe the typical clinical presentation of mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. Once you've done this, then let's move on to the next slide. Now, look at these two images, the one on your left and on the right. The first question is, identify the sequence that is used for the MRI. So MRI has different sequences. It has a T1, it has a T2, it has a flare, it has many other sequences. So which sequence is the first one? Which sequence is the second one? Then identify what is the lesion here. Don't just describe it, but name it. What is the lesion here on this first slide? And what is the lesion out here on the second image? Once you've done that, let's move on to the next slide. Look at this MRI. This is a coronal flare image through the temporal lobes. How would you interpret hippocampal sclerosis on an MRI in the context of mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. So try to identify what are the features of the hippocampus that makes you call it a mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. Now, in the following two slides, I'm going to show you some EEGs. And there are areas of interest that are basically circled with a yellow color. So let's start with this one. You don't have to describe the whole EEG just identify the abnormality in the yellow circle here. On your piece of paper, write down your answer here. Then move on to this next slide here and see if you can identify what this area of interest that is circled with the yellow color. What are your thoughts about the findings within these circles? With regards to the treatment of this patient, she is planning to get pregnant in the near future and you decide to treat her with Keppra, which is also called Levitor Acetam. Apart from depression, can you name three common mental health side effects of Keppra? Now, can you name two anti-seizure medications whose levels may significantly drop during pregnancy and in fact, if you have a patient who gets pregnant on those two anti-seizure medications, many a times you would need to increase the dose of the medication. So write that down on your piece of paper. And the final slide here is, can you name five risk factors for SUDEP? SUDEP, which stands for Sudden Unexpected Death in Epilepsy Patients. Can you name five risk factors for SUDEP? Once you've done this, you've basically completed the OSCE and let me give you a feedback. And if you've done well, 
Congratulations. If you have not done as well, maybe you can do a little more studying about the subject. So going back to the history, what are the important features here? So 36-year-old woman, 10-year history of seizures that occur two to three times per week. So basically, uh, the person who's described here has medically refractory epilepsy, uh, presuming that uh, she has been treated with two or more anti-seizure medications. During the episode, she is noted to space out with oro elementary and hand automatisms. With some of these episodes, she repeatedly keeps saying, oh my God, oh my God. When a person is speaking during the seizure, you consider that it's a non-dominant hemisphere. So if somebody is saying full sentences or words, whether those make sense or not, you think that this is the non-dominant hemisphere. Her right hand is sometimes seen picking at her clothes. So that is right hand automatisms. So usually you see automatisms ipsilateral to the side of the seizure generator or the same side. And her left arm is seen to be dystonic. So dystonic posturing is seen on the contralateral side of the seizure generator. She's never had a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. So that is an important factor an important fact that has been provided to you and let's see why so what is the seizure classification so she spaces out uh, she has a focal onset focal unaware seizure so that will be the seizure classification focal unaware seizure what is the probable seizure lateralization and localization so based on the dystonic posturing of the left arm and automatisms of the right hand this would be a seizure generator in the right temporal head region. Can you describe the typical clinical presentation of mesial temporal lobe epilepsy? Well, patients have spacing out episodes that last 30 to 40 seconds, sometimes may exceed one minute. Many patients have auras such as a rising epigastric sensation. They can have a burnt toast smell, a metallic taste in the mouth. Some patients will have deja vu. Most patients do not have generalized tonic-clonic seizures. So the classic mesial temporal lobe epilepsy does not have frequent tonic-clonic seizures. Tonic-clonic seizures occur when a person misses or stops taking the medication. So as a withdrawal effect, a person can have a tonic-clonic seizure. So that is a classic description of mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. If you go into a past history, you may find that this patient has had a prolonged febrile seizure so those are pertinent questions to ask about mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. Going to the next slide, this first image, this is an axial flare image. The second image is an SWI image. The first image basically shows you a cavernous malformation. So you see the cavernous malformation in the right mesial frontal head region. So you have a popcorn lesion with a surrounding dark region which represents hemosiderin. On the SWI image, you have hemosiderin deposition here. So hemosiderin deposition is seen in the SWI image. We request as epilepsy protocol, we typically request axial SWI images looking for blood products uh, and looking for some th things like cavernous malformations. This next MRI shows a mesial temporal sclerosis in the right head region. For mesial temporal sclerosis, I uh, like looking for increased signal, as you see here, compare the right side with the left side. Atrophy, so loss of volume here. And the third thing is loss of architecture. So you get sort of flattening on the top of the hippocampus on this coronal image. So the three features of mesial temporal sclerosis is increased signal, atrophy, and loss of architecture. So going to the EEG findings, this is a nice sharp wave or a epileptiform discharge seen in the right temporal head region with extension into the right parasagittal head region. The next slide only shows you artifact so this is basically eye blink artifact with superimposed muscle artifact. 
So in terms of treatment, apart from depression, name three common mental health side effects of Keppra. So Keppra can cause mood swings, anger, anxiety, and depression. So we said apart from depression, so it will be the other three, that is anxiety, mood swings, and anger. Rarely you can get psychosis, and rarely you can get other psychological, uh, psychiatric uh, side effects as well. The two anti-seizure medications whose levels may significantly drop during pregnancy include Lamotrigine and Keppra, also known as Levetiracetam. So if the patient is on one of those two medications, you may want to monitor them closely and increase the dose as indicated. My patients with Lamotrigine, when they come to me planning pregnancy, I get baseline Lamotrigine levels so that I can compare those levels to the levels during their pregnancy. Now, what are the five risk factors for SUDEP? So, frequent tonic-clonic seizures, nocturnal seizures, medically refractory epilepsy, patients who are non-compliant with uh, anti-seizure medications. Male gender is also considered a risk factor for SUDEP. And the longer the duration a person has of seizures, the person is at a higher risk. So those were the questions for the Neurology OSCE. I hope you all did well. If you did not, quickly, uh, I suggest that review the subject thoroughly. These are important questions that may be asked in your examination. Thank you for your attention.